provides us with a wonderful selection of activities to use in the English language classroom. These activities are creative, they're interactive, and they're just plain fun. And it doesn't matter what age our students are, what language ability, and what personality type, they're all going to enjoy drama. And it also doesn't matter whether you're a drama teacher or not. You don't have to be an expert in order to use drama in your language classroom. We'll start the course by looking at why drama is effective in the language classroom. Then we'll look at the different categories of activities that you can select from. And finally, we'll spend the rest of the course looking at these actual activities. I'll walk you through the instructions so that you can implement these activities effectively in your classroom. Why should we use drama in our language classroom? It's fun. It energizes our students. It's good for all types of language learners, so our visual learners, our auditory learners, and our kinesthetic learners. It allows our students to be creative, and it allows our students to use language in context. <music> to start to understand the range of activities that we have available to us for use in the language classroom, we're going to look at the categories of activities. I'd like you to take a look at page two and activity two on your handout. Down the left hand side I've given you the different categories of drama activities and on the right hand side I've given you definitions. See if you can match them up and then we'll see how you did. Number one, warm up and cool down activities is letter D. These are activities that are short, fun, and high energy. We use them to relax our students and to really get them into the language learning experience. These activities often involve physical movement and they actually don't always need to involve speaking. Number two, observation activities is letter C. These are activities that involve students working with their environment. They have to notice different things that are going on and comment on what they see around them. Number three, interpretation activities, is A. These are activities that allow students to be really creative. As the teacher, you'll give them some clues or some hints, and then they have to take those clues and hints and do whatever they want with them. Number four, creation and invention activities, is letter F. These are activities that allow students to create. So, for example, I might give a group of students five props, and then they have to create a storyline that uses those props. Or, I might tell them they need to create a piece of transportation for the year 2050. Number five, word play activities, is letter B. These are exactly what they sound like. These are activities that get students working with the words and the language. Number six, problem solving activities, is letter E. These are, once again, exactly what they sound like. These are activities where you give students a problem or an issue and they have to work together to somehow fix that problem. Let's take a look at some drama activities and we'll start with activities that fall in our warm up and cool down category. activity is called mirror image. You're going to put your students into pairs and each person in the pair faces the other person like this. One person is designated as the leader and the other person is the mirror or the follower. So person A is going to do any type of movement they want and person B, the mirror, has to provide a mirror image of that activity. So if person A raises this hand, then person B is going to raise the opposite hand to look like they're in a mirror. After about three minutes, have the students switch roles. The mirror now becomes the leader, and the leader becomes the mirror. The next activity is called freeze frame. For this activity, everyone's going to work together as a class. And you as the teacher are going to start by playing some music. While the music's going, the students are moving around and dancing and doing whatever they want. As soon as you stop the music, you're going to say an action. 
and students have to freeze in the position as if they're doing that action. So for example, the music's going, you stop the music, and you say, playing tennis. All of the students are going to freeze in a pose as if they're playing tennis. Students move around, dance, do whatever they want. You stop the music and say, playing basketball. And all of the students are going to freeze in a pose as if they're playing basketball. And you can just keep going as long as you want with this activity. You can use this activity to get students practicing any language that involves movement. So all of the sports language, any type of action like sitting, walking, jumping, dancing, and so on. The next activity is called building construction. Put your students into groups of five or six, and then say the name of a famous building. For example, the pyramids in Egypt, the Eiffel Tower, the Empire State Building. Students work in their group to construct that building using their bodies. They have to use every person in their group. Only give them about five minutes to do this and then have everybody look and see what the other groups did, and then give them the name of another building, and they have to do the same thing. Moving on to the observation activities category. The first activity in this category is called what am I holding? Put your students into pairs and have each person in the pair stand and face their partner. One of the people in the pairs is then going to put their hands behind their back. Once that's in place, go along and put different objects into the hands of the partners with their hands behind their backs. The other partner has to ask yes or no questions to try and figure out what their partner is holding behind their back. For example, I might put a paperclip into one person's hands. Their partner then will ask questions such as, is it heavy? Is it sharp? Is it big? Is it small? And so on to eventually figure out what his or her partner is holding. Once everyone has guessed what his or her partner is holding, switch roles and put different objects in the new holder's hands. It's really important to use fun or strange or unusual objects for this activity. So use things like paper clips and staplers and strange kitchen gadgets. Really make it challenging for students to guess what his or her partner is holding. The next activity is called Circle of Feelings. Have everyone sit and make a big circle and ask every student to think of one emotion and then some kind of gesture that goes with that emotion. As the teacher, you're going to start with your emotion. So I've picked anger and my gesture is I'm going to take my right fist and slam it into my left hand. So I'm going to start by saying anger. And then the student sitting to my left is going to repeat what I did, anger, and come up with their own emotion and their own gesture, sad. And then the next student is going to repeat my gesture, the second student's gesture, and then add their own gesture and emotion. And it's just going to keep going and going and going. Obviously, the last student in the circle has the hardest job because he or she has to remember every single emotion and every single gesture. On your handout, there's a few other alternatives to this activity or variations that you can try as well, and I'll just let you read those on your own. The next category is interpretation activities. And the first activity in this category is called one word dialogues. There's a bit of preparation involved. Before the class, sit down and create some one-word dialogues. You're going to have about six lines in each dialogue, and each line consists only of a single word. When class time comes around, put your students in pairs and give each pair one of the dialogues. Working with their partner, students have to decide who's talking in this dialogue, what the situation is, what the emotions are that's going on, who the characters are, all of the background information that goes with the dialogue. Students then rehearse the dialogue, really practicing the intonation and any gestures and actions that go with what they're saying. 
And finally, students perform their dialogues for the rest of the class. As a variation, you can make sure that two pairs have exactly the same one-word dialogue. They can then perform their version of that dialogue for the other pair, and they can compare what they came up with. As another variation again, they can work in their new group of four and come up with ways to lengthen that one-word dialogue. The next activity is called Group Charades. Before class, prepare a list of 10 items. These items can either be famous people or types of activities or whatever you want to focus on in terms of vocabulary. Once the class starts, divide your students into groups of five or six. Have one person from each group come up to you and give them the first item on your list. They then go back to their groups and act out whatever that item is. They cannot talk. The members of their group try to guess what they're trying to communicate. Once a member of the group does guess, that person who guessed comes up to you, tells you the answer, and gets the next item on the list. And all of the groups continue like this until one of the groups has gone all the way through your entire list. That group then becomes the winner of group charades. We're moving into the next category, which is creation and invention activities. The first activity we'll look at is called themes and scenes. There's a bit of preparation for you in this one. Before class starts, take 10 pieces of paper and on each piece of paper, write a different theme. So for example, crime doesn't pay or the early bird gets the worm. Just different ideas or themes. Then take another 10 pieces of paper and on these ones put scenes or settings. For example, a classroom, a picnic, a movie theater. Divide the class into groups of four or five students. Have one person from each group come up to you and pick one theme and one scene. But don't let them see what they're picking. Just have the pieces of paper face down and they're just going to pick blindly. The students then take their pieces of paper back to their group, and the group has about 20 minutes to come up with a skit that incorporates that theme and that scene. So students have to come up with the dialogue, the characters, anything that's going to make this skit work and follow the theme and the scene. Students can also incorporate props if they want to. Once students have practiced their skits, have them perform them for the class. And the rest of the class has to guess what is the theme and what is the scene of the skit. The next activity is called Story Beginnings. And there's a little bit of preparation you have to do for this one as well. Come up with very climactic, dramatic endings for a type of story. So focus on either a ghost story, a love story, or a crime story and come up with one sentence that ends the story. So for example, if I'm looking at a ghost story, my climactic ending could be, and the girl ran frightened and terrified from the house. That's the ending. Then I'm gonna have my students get into groups and I'll give them these dramatic endings. They have to work together and create the beginning of the story. And they have to act out the story and then say that final climactic ending. activity is called Tableau. I'll start by explaining what a tableau is. A tableau is a still scene. So you've got certain characters and they're all in a particular pose and that whole scene together tells part of a story. So in a tableau activity, our students are going to move from one still scene to the next still scene to the next still scene in order to tell a story. Divide the class into groups of four or five students and give each group one different story to create Tableau for. Give them about 15 minutes to read their story and create the four Tableau with which to tell their story. Make sure they practice posing in the actual still scenes that they're going to use. Then have students come up to the front of the class and perform their Tableau for the class. 
The other students have to guess what their story is. The next category is called word play activities. The first activity we'll look at here is called group spelling. This one's really fun. Put your students into groups of five or six. Give the whole class the same word. Within their groups, students have to somehow arrange themselves so that they spell out that word. And once everyone has spelled the word, give them another word, and another word, and another word. Just keep this going as long as students are interested in having some fun with it. The next activity is called alphabet conversation. Put your students into pairs and then say a letter from the alphabet. One student in the pair has to start a conversation with his or her partner and their conversation has to start with the letter that you said. The partner then has to respond starting with the next letter and the partner responds again with the next letter and so on back and forth. Let's take a look at what this might sound like. If I say the letter D, the first student in the pair is going to say, did you go to a movie last night? The next person might say, every night last week I went to a movie, because it starts with the letter E. Then the first student has to start something with the letter F. Fun! How did you enjoy it? Then we have to go on to the letter G. Great! And so on, H, I, J, K, until the teacher stops the activity. It's actually really fun, but very, very challenging. The final category is problem solving activities. The first activity we'll look at here is called committee meeting. Put your students into groups of five or six and appoint one person as the chairperson for that group. So these are your committees. Give each group either the same or different scenario and as a committee, they have to somehow solve that scenario or come up with an end point. For example, the scenario could be that the committee is the entertainment committee for your school. And their job is to come up with how the school is going to celebrate Christmas. So they have to plan out a Christmas party. Another possible scenario is the group is a committee of concerned citizens and the local community has experienced a lot of vandalism recently and they have to together figure out how they're going to deal with this vandalism. The next activity is called Life Raft. Before the activity, you have to prepare a list of 15 items that you would typically find on a boat or on a life raft. Then put your students into groups of five or six. And their job is to decide which of those objects they're going to take in their lifeboat with them or their life raft. Their boat's sinking, they have to get all of their group members in, and they only have room for eight of those 15 items. They have 15 minutes to decide what's going to go in the life raft with them and also why. Then get students to present what they decided upon to the rest of the class. It's actually really fun because no two groups ever decide on the same eight items to take with them. This is just a small sample of the wide range of drama activities that we can use in our language classrooms. These activities are motivating, high energy, and fun. Let's not forget, however, that they also help our students practice and use their language. Any of the drama activities that involve students speaking will give students the opportunity to practice their pronunciation so they can work on the accurate production of sound, accurate intonation, accurate connected speech, and accurate stress. Any activity that involves students working with a particular set of words will obviously help them with vocabulary acquisition. So this includes activities such as freeze frame, what am I holding, and group charades. Any drama activities that require students to speak in complete sentences will help them with their grammar and context usage. So this includes activities such as story beginnings, committee meeting, and life raft. There are also drama activities that allow students to delve into the culture of the language. So this includes activities such as themes and scenes, tableau, and story beginnings. There are two other language benefits for drama activities. 
The first one is that drama activities, because they're so fun and because they're so motivating, really lower student anxiety levels about speaking in another language. Secondly, many drama activities allow students the opportunity for spontaneous language usage. So they don't have a lot of time to think about what they're going to say. They really have to think on their feet. And this type of situation mimics real life. Thank you for joining me on this exploration of the use of drama techniques and drama activities in the language classroom. I really hope you enjoy trying these activities with your students.